All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris McMeeking. Uh, I am the mobile accessibility uh, team lead here at DQ. Um, and iOS 14 just came out, and there's some new features. Uh, Kate Owens um, is, is with us uh, today. She is our uh, a mobile developer here, and she has been exploring the features of iOS 14. She is going to walk us through them, and uh, the rest of us are going to respond. Uh, can everybody uh, take a minute um, and just introduce yourselves and what you do here at uh, DQ? Kate, uh, go ahead. Hi, I'm Kate Owens. I'm a mobile iOS developer at DQ. Jennifer? I, uh, I'm Jennifer. I am uh, the iOS team lead at DQ. And Jitin? Hello, uh, I'm Jatin Vaishnav, uh, accessibility subject matter expert, specialized in mobile technologies. Uh, uh, thanks, everybody. And like I said, my name is Chris Meeking, um, and, uh, and, and I kind of meld the technical and uh, accessibility teams here uh, at DQ. Um, and with that, uh, Kate, can you kick us off? I think first up on the agenda is a new feature. Is this new for accessibility, or is this a new feature in general? Uh, uh, widgets. I mean, those have been in Android for a while. What's uh, what's up with widgets? Sorry, so I can't help. A... I'm, I'm an Android and an iOS guy. <laughs> I can't help but throw in that little that little uh, that jab there. But uh, but go little ahead. Jab. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Used to it. Um, so it's a new feature for iOS. Um, we didn't have widgets before, and now we can like move them all around the screen. So just to show you, they all kind of look like this. And they kind of, I, I think that they allow for a lot more ease of discoverability. Things are a little wow. easier to find. Um, but you can also add. I got to give iOS so, a little credit there. Those widgets right? do look significantly prettier than my Android widgets. Yeah. That I've right. had for they 10 look, years. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm iOS tech lead, and yet my personal device is an Android, so. <laughs> yeah. But I was a uh, user experience is we have to give it to them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, totally agreed. Kate, can you take those widgets and put them wherever you want? Or are they just confined to that, uh, that one screen of widgets there? I can put them wherever I want. And I can add, let me add a map widget. Right. I'll do this one. Right there. So what was that screen that you were just showing us? Was that like the... Or are those are those widgets that you already have installed, or are those are those widgets that that are available for you to mm -hmm. to add? Yeah, so this one is the ones that are already installed. Okay. Um, but if you just do the normal long press on the screen, then you see this uh, plus sign here, and then that is all the available widgets. Cool. Oh, oh, um, so, so it's gonna um, it's gonna grow. <laughs> As we progress through this video, Kate, one of the things that I have in mind is let's make sure that we test that widget that you just added with okay. all of these new assistive technologies, right? <laughs> let's, see, yeah. let's see how that let's see how that works, uh, especially on this. Can we pick something to be fair to Apple? Can we pick something simpler than a map widget, real quick? Can you replace that? Because that's me. I can. <laughs> That's that's fair. That's fair. I, I don't know of any accessible map out there. So let's let's pick a, like weather. I, I think weather or like is there like an Android the calendar thing? Super ah, super simple. The, ah, we'll do weather. I like this weather one. Very simple. Yeah, this something one's good. that nice. I think who doesn't want to know what the temperature is outside, right? That is not a, a, a disability or non-disability specific thing. We all care that it's 75 degrees in Detroit out right now, which it is, and it's perfect. Yes. So can, yeah. can you describe uh, what exactly the widget is? Is it a uh, kind of a control center or easy accessibility of certain items? Yeah, so it sort of just, it gives you a snapshot of some piece of information and you're in whatever app it's for, right? So now we, here in this widget, we have a little snapshot of our weather app currently, but we can also open it and then we get that functionality from it, being able to just quick go right there, right where you want. Oh, okay. so, so if you have more, more than one, then it will uh, show in the same area with more than one item? Uh, well, you can add... Let's see. It looks like I can't add. I can't add another weather app. It looks yeah. like. 
Yeah. Or just add a calendar. Yeah, it, just add a calendar for it. It has yeah. even uh, disappeared completely from your list, Kate. That's super interesting. While you're working on adding yeah. um, that, that calendar widget next to that, uh, one of the things that I love about this feature, um, my Android device, and actually something I've always believed, um, is that people with disabilities stand to gain more from um, mobile than the, the rest of the world does. And let me explain real quick what I mean by that. Um, I love that I can get an Uber. Uh, right, that, that that I can go to a bar and feel really, really comfortable uh, just with the ability to, calling a taxi is a pain, right? And Uber's really simple, mm -hmm. it makes my life easier. As a blind person, uh, that capability is just infinitely more impactful than it is to me. Or as, uh, uh, you know, any type of person that has the ability to get in a random car and do that from their phone and feel safe doing it, um, it just benefits from that so much. And, and to me, widgets are the next step in that style of convenience. The ability to check my calendar um, without having to enter the calendar app for someone like a switch control or a blind user or anything, it is just the next level of convenience um, that they probably aren't even aware that we all uh, access so easily. Right. And so th these widgets, you know, when we're talking about why is this important for people with disabilities, it just ups the convenience factor, uh, maybe only marginally for some, but significantly uh, for some subgroup. Uh, uh, speaking of which, can we jump into Kate? Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think the next thing we had on here, uh, uh, we had sound recognition, but to be honest, I am really interested in the various interactions of uh, voice control and voiceover with this. Um, can we try back tap um, um, uh, and see what that back tap thing is about and then go to voice oh, yeah. control and voiceover, just kind of uh, venture mm -hmm. away from our initial plan slightly? Sounds good. Let me find back tap. Here we go. So, and, and tell us what back tap is and then go into mm -hmm. that whole, how does back tap work with these new widgets mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. So. Backtap is a new assistive technology that allows um, users to set different actions to be carried out b based upon a double tap or a triple tap on the back side of the device. So let's go to touch and backtap. Here we go. So let's see. We can, so you can make an accessibility shortcut for backtap, which I think is pretty cool. Um, can also do all kinds of different actions that are pre-made. So let's just go with. Can you create a custom mm -hmm. one? I think, yeah, uh, let's start with some uh, predefined one. That would be yeah. awesome. Uh, the yeah. Case, uh, yeah, yeah. One, yeah, one of the things I'm wondering, Kate, mm -hmm. so uh, as I'm understanding, mm -hmm. tell me if my understanding of this is correct right now, because I, I, and by the way, audience, one of the things that we did intentionally is I am coming in completely blind. I believe Jatin is as well. I think Jennifer worked with Kate a little bit. In I have a little bit stuff, of knowledge, but, but it's not. Yeah. Kate is the only yeah. one here with any clue about what this stuff does. So you're getting raw, raw reactions here. Um, yeah. Kate, yeah. Um, one of the things that I'm curious about is, is, is so are, we, are you basically saying that this is just giving us the ability to tap the back of the phone and, and then perform some predefined action? Yes, exactly. Can we just skip ahead to back tap <laughs> with switch control with voiceover because that sounds fun. <laughs> oh, okay, and, yeah. And can Let's... and can and can you do this? Um, can yeah. we have double tap be um, app switcher? Okay. And sure. triple tap, uh, 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 Jatin, t take your pick. What 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 are you wanting to see triple tap do? Yeah. All kinds of. Things. Uh, let's say screenshot. 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 Oh, nice. good idea. I like nice. it. That's a good oh, one. That, yeah, that's, that's excellent. A very good one. Okay. okay. So, so wow. I have one technical question here. Yeah. Uh -huh. So how does this work when you have a case with the phone? <laughs> yeah, that's it a good actually, question. <laughs> it does still work. I did notice that um, it would lag by a second, like a fraction of a second, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that's because of the case. 
I guess I could try. Let me take that. Just, I'll take it off can, later and try. It's a good question. The, look, can, I, can I turn that question back? One of the things that I'm wondering is how they're doing this. Um, I don't know. Initially, my thought was that there was a sensor in the back of the phone, but mm -hmm. I'm wondering if they're actually just, if they have, uh, one of the things that I actually did early on in my career at the University of Michigan was work in a lab in which we were using um, uh, uh, gyros and, and motion sensors and all that stuff to detect footsteps. And I'm wondering if they're just using the motion sensor on the device with some algorithm for detecting the fact that that is shaking, which is cool That's... and awesome. Mm -hmm. But when they're enabled together with other assistive technologies, isn't that a form of motion actuation determining an action, which to me sounds like a, a counter accessibility feature? What are the WCAG, uh, whatever implications of that? I, I, I'm struggling to think about it. Jitin, do you have any perspective? Yeah, it's actually basically uh, how the functionality works, right? Uh, right now is uh, they are providing a tap. Um, so it's kind of giving an aid to the user that they can uh, perform some function with uh, with some, some gesture without going into the phone. And which is like, for example, let's say as a, as a uh, screen reader user, if I want to take a screenshot, I can do it just by tapping it and then sending it for example with the voice recognition this is amazing uh, to give a quick uh, efficient way from ios yeah yeah so so as long as you are someone who can accomplish that it's giving you a shortcut to do something um, while not being incompatible with any other assistive technologies we assume let's it, see let's see what happens it when reminds me to use all these three at once it reminds me a little oh, bit yeah. of assistive touch um, which I think is on um, iOS where, where you can, where you can use, um, is it just a single finger to do things that usually require multiple fingers? Is that accurate, Kate? I, I think so. I mean, I haven't looked around at that one. Uh, uh, skip that. Let's, let's focus on yeah. the new stuff. We'll yeah. go back to that if we have time. I am honestly anxious to watch just... back tap mm -hmm. and the, the three assistive technologies, uh, cohese mm -hmm. together Oops. here. Sorry, Jennifer. That's fine. Ah. It just it just reminded me of that. I we didn't have to test it with that. I was just yeah no and and your your interpretation is is correct. It, they're they're very very closely related. Ah. Um, if so, not, Kate, uh... you uh, you switched <laughs> on uh, voiceover. I did. We're gonna. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> She's <laughs> trying to make a payment. Apparently, all right. We'll cut that part out. Yeah. <laughs> <Ryan>. <laughs> okay. or, may, so, or maybe we can write a raw right. footage. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. We'll, we'll have Ryan it's censor extra. that with something fun. Right. So we wanted voiceover and, and voice switch control. And voice control. Voice, and voice voiceover control. and voice okay. control. Which is something that iOS has advert like Apple advertised that this is something that they are intentionally trying to support together in this yep. release, right? So, yeah. Kate, I, I honestly just kind of want to watch you for a bit and see how this works. Okay. Can you do this? Uh, get yeah. us your calendar update and get us a weather update. Um, okay. Would be great. All right. Let's see. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Ah. Okay. Let's what see, happens if you using say a different microphone? Like no 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 uh, uh, we can see your we can see your um your uh, oh, the update, reader uh, the, the reader and, mm -hmm. and I cool. think that's fine um okay. let me understand cool. let me uh, help uh, audience uh, members who aren't familiar with this overlay mm -hmm. at the bottom here uh, uh Kate has this little message at the bottom that is the text that voiceover would be sharing um and and to be honest Kate uh, now that the audience understands that. Um, I prefer that so that we can converse. And and if you're interested in, in what VoiceOver would be saying, uh, go ahead and read it out loud for us. Okay. Right. Wednesday, September 16th, button, actions available. Yeah, so so you just focus the calendar widget, and, and that was the announcement. Can you, without touching your device, um, get it to uh, uh, announce for us the calendar widget? Yeah, and keep your hands up for us. I like that. Okay. The calendar or the weather widget? 
the weather widget. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, get, weather widget. Let, Ooh, let's, okay. let's see you get the weather widget update without touching anything for a hypothetical okay. blind user trying to do this. Okay. Um, that we can't see your number hands. one. Okay, oh, that, that was good. That was tap good. one. Tap one. Nope. <laughs> Go oh, home. And, 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 it, and it just automatically <laughs> tapped it. That is not what I was expecting. I was expecting yeah. it to focus. Oh, it's, it's, oh wow, it's reading oh, it's, it's, what voice control, what voice controls uh, things are. Yeah. Oof, 13 yeah, awesome. folder, 14 page control, 15 phone, Oof. 16 messages, 17 <laughs> mail, 18 wow. safari. 18 that's safari. a lot of information. <laughs> Whoa. That is a yeah, lot of information. Lot. Jatin, mm -hmm. I, I want your initial reaction to this before my own. Yeah. Uh, I think so two different assistive technology would not really kind of it's here it's kind of at a <laughs> junction <laughs> where you know one is trying to understand other assistive technology which in in general uh, use case uh, or a, you know a scenario would not be the uh, true use case but uh, if you think about it as an artificial intelligence it can talk. One iPhone can talk to each other. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's very interesting. I, I'm yeah. I'm just having a hard time figuring out who the user of this would be, um, and and what they would be doing with it, right? Because because the the thing I noticed is if you looked at the bottom uh, where it says when when it was reading that out, there was you had uh, things like eight comma empty space mm -hmm. comma safari. Yeah. Right? What was it looking? For? Yeah, what was what was supposed to be in that space? Well, that space would normally be reserved for a role announcement. Yeah. Right. But there was nothing there. Yeah. So if I am blind hmm. and trying to engage with this, I am nothing but confused. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think. Right. right. Eight Safari. What do I do with that? I mean, they could at least throw the roll of button in there, right? Right. That's a, Seems like so trivial. Button or icon or really anything, yeah. yeah. When personally, when I was starting to use voice control, I was confused. Like, like there was a natural. Okay, I can say tap eight. Uh, oh which wait, is hold on, hold on. So, sorry, could we yeah. interrupt real quick? I noticed yeah. that oh. five. If you, I noticed that it read off five September sixteenth, uh, twenty twenty, as though it was reading off the widget as like the like the widget summary. Huh. Um, so it's grabbing it onto the accessibility huh. label of the thing for an so. advanced control, mm -hmm. but grabbing onto just the text of the control for simple controls. Um, that seems actually attempting to support this well would seem to me to be actually dangerous. You know, like let your mm -hmm. voice control users be your voice control users. Let your um, voice over users be your voice over users, but don't do any dedicated effort at trying to support the hypothetical combination of them because I think Apple has some work to do to make this experience something that what's, makes any type of sense. What's also interesting yeah. to me is that I'm noticing that the one is actually for, for the Facebook app and there's no way to actually yeah. tap onto the first widget, which is the weather app. I was, I was confused. I was by that just as well. gonna say that too because yeah. I just noticed that. <laughs> so it's like, how yeah. are you supposed to interact with it? And, I don't know, and but then is the it, calendar has one though. The calendar so one's fine. Right. I, well, is it, is it because on. it's the first? I don't think the calendar one mm -hmm. is fine though. Notice where the five is located. It's not next to the widget. It's next to September. Uh, That's which true. Presumably, when when remember when voiceover when we just had voiceover on. I believe the voiceover target went to the calendar, which suggests to me that the calendar is probably actionable with an accessibility label, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so there, the, we have two actionable targets in here. We have the calendar itself and the entirety of the widget, and that widget isn't accessible. My question, and I don't know if we have time to answer this now, <laughs> is does a developer oh i love that i love that, that already? <laughs> yeah. oh we, we gotta leave that we gotta leave that, that was amazing. they're gonna be in that blog post video <laughs> yeah good thing so this anyway. is interesting the weather app uh, voiceover focus is placed on the weather app 
but it not is, the but it's voice inside, control. not the mm-hmm. widget, right? When, when I mm-hmm. look at a mm-hmm. widget, I don't look at it as individual pieces. I look at it right. as a summary of things right. coming from a, a thing that I can then tap that and go in and investigate the details, right? If a widget is trying to share too much information with me, it abandons the convenience factor. Right. Yeah, the, the, the widget, widget reminds me of, of kind of the, the summary element accessibility trait um, that people typically put in their apps. Um, you'll typically see that in the weather app, for example. Um, and so I would expect the widget to behave in that same way as a summary element. Yeah. Um, and the fact that it seems as though it's not is interesting. Yeah, no, agreed. I, I think we got to wrap this up. This is becoming a little yes. long. Sorry. Uh, no, no. The, uh, great information. Um, I, I think a closing comment I have here mm-hmm. is what I'm seeing in this voice control voiceover hypothetical combination um, is that uh, Apple is continuing to use uh, assistive technologies as kind of experiments to, to see what bites. And um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this bites. The novelty of it is pretty cool. But I think my formal recommendation right now would be to avoid attempting to support this formally. Um, Jennifer, Jatin, Kate, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down on that assessment? I would agree with that. It it still has some some work to do. There's still some things that need to get ironed out. Yep. Agreed. Jatin, what do you think? Pre, yeah, a little bit premature. We may have, because we have tried a scenario where, you know, we are trying with two assistive technology. Uh, certainly as a feature, uh, the widget seems interesting and cool. Uh, if we work with only one assistive technology, it will function well, I believe, because it's Apple. But uh, it's interesting to see further. Cool. J- Jennifer? Yeah. No, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's, it's, it's just not quite there yet. Um, yeah. But maybe maybe when iOS 15 rolls around, it'll be it'll be it'll be a little bit more stable. Yeah, it, <laughs> or who knows it, what'll happen? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> it, it's difficult for we me to see, see it right now as anything but a novelty that I play around yeah. with when my phone is sitting on my desk. No, Makes sense. I, I think it's a it's mm-hmm. a it's a combination of technologies without a designated user base, and and maybe we're wrong, and 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 we will watch for that and keep everybody updated. But uh, our, uh, that is our team's initial raw reaction is hesitation. Um, thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you for listening. This was really fun. Um, I expect that we will continue doing this with some panel of people um, as these uh, operating system updates come out. Um, Jatin, Kate, Jennifer, thank you for your time. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed listening and uh, have a good day.